Good afternoon, viewers out there, and um, welcome to this uh, very episode. And this is Mayo Eniton, and I'm with Mrs. or Madam Titi Lokwe Anifo Woshi. Nice to meet you, it's Madam good Titi. Meet you, good to meet you. So, how have you been? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well. Fine. All right, so let's get straight down to business. So, uh, Madam Titi Lokwe, I'm aware that you studied law. Yes. Yeah, so has it been in the practice? Uh, well, I wouldn't, yeah, it's just, it's just been how many years now, but practice for me, I haven't really been seriously practicing. Oh, really? But, okay, so when you say practice, you mean litigation? Yes, I haven't really been into litigation. The last time I did litigation was 2018. That's, uh, that should be way back. Um, five years ago. Five, six years? Yeah, five, wow. six years ago. Well, I, I believe every lawyer should be practicing, uh, practicing litigations. Well, yeah, but for me, I got engaged in quite a number of things. But I'm really looking into getting seriously back into our law firm and, you know, getting jiggy and oh, getting into wow. the court. But I've been doing a lot of conveyances. I oh, have been wow. doing a lot of conveyances. I'm glad for my understanding partners. Oh, but wow. hopefully, hopefully in the next few years, I'm going to get back into, into litigation. litigation. Yeah. Wow, that's so quite impressive to hear. So, yeah, moving down the line in law and in your legal pro profession, um, how has it really infect, um, affected or influenced your advocating and um, mm -hmm. other areas of um, lifestyle? Okay, so the knowledge of the law is like the fulcrum of any standard living. Absolutely. So I think... Me knowing the law has really helped me to navigate into a lot of things. For now, for example, I'm a published author, and in the part of uh, politics and governance, where I seem to be quite prominent, yeah. uh, I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of writing to call the attention of those in government and those who people are serving to the right path. And I yeah. think being a lawyer has actually enhanced my skill as an advocate and also my writing skills. So I think Absolutely. it's all about the law. And then there's something about uh, being a lawyer. You, you, you easily see areas that people won't subconsciously see. Absolutely. So I think I'm glad to my dad for pushing me to study law. Pushing you. <laughs> wow, amazing. Amazing. Of course, there's a saying that, um, that I came across many years ago that states the knowledge of law is our the knowledge of law is our rights and knowledge knowledge of our rights is our pride. Oh, oh my God, I'm just saying. I think that should time. be Socrates. Well, that's like or, that's like a level of tease here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so um, let's get down to your personal initiative, which is um, Eagles Foundation. Yeah. Uh, for humanity. Yeah. So what really inspired you to? Okay, so uh, ten years ago. Yes. I was. I said, okay, let me say 12 years ago, I was new in Quara, relatively. Yeah. And I, w I had a lot of cultural, social, political shock. Mm. I was born in Lagos. I grew up in Lagos. And I, was, I know as a fact that it's not just Ikeja that is the most developed place in Lagos. Yeah. There's so many other places that are even far more progressive and developed Absolutely. than Ikeja. But in my own state, Quara, once you drive past the government house and some areas in Ilori, you can't go to any other part of the state. Mm. Bad roads, very, very poor infrastructure, literally no social amenities. Mm. So I, I, was also in, uh, I was also doing uh, student unionism then. Absolutely. But I did a lot of writing, criticizing the government that even ended up in DSSS uh, net. Wow. So by 2015, I finished my tenure as vice president of the student union in the University of Illinois. I wanted to contest for president, but I couldn't run female, Illinois, Muslim, Absolutely, and all yes. that. So I remember I went back home. The drive back home was very, very hectic. I met with my king. He took me around my community. I met with two different kings. They took me around my community, and I really knew that I needed to do something because before my dad died in 2011, he was literally the one doing all of that. The road was graded by my dad. The schools in my community were built wow. by my dad. Wow. The electricity connection was done by my dad. So I knew from what, from what, I, from what I saw, so, yeah. I knew that I needed to do something more than just writing articles criticizing the government. Absolutely. And so I remember it was close to my birthday, my 19th birthday, 
and myself and my friends met at Magodo in Lagos, two yeah. parties supposedly, but I'm like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go back to Kwara and take a trip to the communities to see how we can help. And that was what better Eagles Foundation for wow. Humanity. From wow. that till now, although I already like reduced our activities because uh, at the moment I'm now core, I can't, I can no longer say that I am anti, I am apolitical. Yeah. So, but when we were really into humanitarianism, yeah. we were drilling boreholes for communities, we were distributing food stuff, we were building libraries in schools, yeah, uh, started book clubs across all senatorial zones in Kwara. Paris. And then we moved to yeah. uh, Shokoto, came to uh, Nasarawa State here, went to Ogun State, did stuffs in Lagos, distributed bracelets for blind students, uh, gave scholarships to undergraduates in Las Potec University of Bologna, Kwara Poly, Kwara State University, uh, uh, Kohed Oro, and what have you. So that's what we've been, that was what we were doing, not just myself, I had about 40 volunteers back then wow. when I was in school, yeah. I think I still did that 2019, 2020, 2021. Then in 2021, I got appointed as, I left the APC, so I got appointed as spokesperson of the Young Progressive Party IPC. in Kwara State. Mm -hmm. So I figured it's almost impossible for me to draw a line between my activities as a humanitarian and opposing the government. Or, uh, so we had to just step down activities with Eagles Foundation and just focus on myself trying to, you know, put in effort to encourage good governance in Kwara. So that's Absolutely. Well, I think you've really laid a whole lot of mark, mm. you know, with um, Eagles Foundation. Glad so I think we should discuss about Citizens Hub. Okay, Citizens Hub. Yeah, Hope. of course. I'm oh. also aware that you are the COO, that's the Chief Operating Officer. I don't know if that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chief Operating Officer, yeah. right? And um, of course, um, my, my interest would be what are those strategies that you've been able to put in place to also help, you know, the Citizens Hub uh, fill up that space in order for, you know, for people to be re properly represented and also making the people actively involved in governance okay, and so policy making. Okay, so Citizens Hub is owned by Aisha Yesufo. Okay. Yeah, so Citizens Hub is owned by Aisha Yesufo. And I remember uh, I came on board, she invited me on board late 2020, I think, 2021, yeah. Yeah. And what she wanted to do at that time was to shift away from her personality to institutionalizing activism and encouraging active citizens oh. for Nigeria. And I have an executive MBA in nonprofit leadership and management. I have a master's in NGO management. Oh. So bringing me on board to manage uh, Citizens Hub was beautiful. But at some point in time, I remember, you know, we we're trying to push for uh, voters registration before the 2023 election yeah. we're really really into that and then there came some sort of i don't want to use the word conflicting interest yeah but you know there was the obedient movement there was what we really, really wanted to do in encouraging active citizenry okay and so that was what prompted us to now delve into for citizens alliance oh, so wow. for citizens alliance was uh, a collaboration of persons like myself, Aisha Isufurino Oduola, Mr. Macaroni, Banky W, MI, uh, Auntie Yemi, uh, oh my God, there's somebody, I've forgotten his name, he's in PDP, and then Wale Sho, uh, Yele Showore. Yeah. So what we wanted to do with uh, For Citizens Alliance, as opposed to what we're doing in Citizens of is to now concentrate that political activism yeah. in For Citizens Alliance whilst maintaining encouraging poly, um, financial literacy with yeah. Citizens Hub. So we're able to cut it into two. I was now managing Citizens Hub with regards to encouraging financial uh, independence and financial literacy because I also believe so strongly in the fact that the biggest problem with Nigeria is poverty. Yeah. And that when we are able to help people to get educated with the normal basic balance sheet something, normal basic, if you have a business, you shouldn't put your hand into it to you know, and so we're looking into going to markets, going to the streets, talking to people in the IDP to strengthen their knowledge of financial literacy. And that was what we were doing with uh, uh, That's Citizens, citizens uh, okay. And then for Citizens Alliance, Alliance, we were, you know, 
pushing for across. I mean, every person in that coalition had their strength. Okay. So what we're doing was also galvanize into having a uniform agenda. Mm. We wanted to have something like the five for five for enters, but somehow, some way, uh, different political interests absolutely you know, came in, and then it's a, it's a question of: Are we doing the alliance for the obedient movement, or are we doing the alliance for a pure Nigeria? Have a scorecard, something neutral, where irrespective of your political party. Uh, we'll Ideologies. be able to say these are the basic things that the people need and they score uh, candidates okay. based on the scorecard. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we couldn't really scale beyond uh, the 2022 electioneering Nation. period. So that's like it for mm. citizens of and for citizens alive. Yeah, because I actually really saw that you've covered to you've covered for citizens of and, and then the citizen yeah, alliance because i can't talk about them independently absolutely yeah all together yes. so well i think this will lead me to asking a question okay so what are those ideologies that has actually um shaped you know your approach towards and strategies towards these things you've mentioned okay for me i think the first one is uh, allow me to just go a little into religion. Absolutely, <laughs> let's go there. Yeah, okay, so there's this verse of the Quran, I think Surah Al-Baqarah, it says, La Khalifullah who knows and illa with ya, that there is nothing that would happen to you that God does not know. No, yeah. So for me, like where I come from, I come, I mean, I'm like number 26 or 27 of how many children? Yeah, and so it's just, yeah, so, uh, I'm like the only person who is involved in politics in the whole of all of us, and I'm the second to the last, penultimate. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have nephews and nieces who are older than me. Yeah, I have nieces and nephews who are older than me. I have older ones who are older than my mom. Yeah. And so I believe strongly in the fact that whatever it is I want to be, whatever it is that will happen to me, it has already been written. Mm -hmm. So I try my best not to be too pained with whatever it is that happens to me. So like I said to even people who I do business with, I tell them, if I give you this supply, if you don't pay, it's left with you and God. Mm. And so that's like my biggest ideology with life, even with politics. People will say, oh my God, think about it. You're supposed to be contested for this. I feel like whatever will happen to me will happen to me irrespective. That's one. So there's something my dad says, Frequently, he always says, "Why well, say and afraid law? You know, we are egomino, so our Yoruba is quite twisted. Absolutely, and afraid law means that like we are just we we'll move. Why we move? We're we'll we yeah. just passengers. Yes. So if I close my eyes today, I might be gone in the yeah. next few seconds. So it's just like Allah, Allah, anything can happen at any point in that. So that's Absolutely. like my ideology in life, in business, in politics, whatever it is, anything. Where like I say, people say any day I die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I really, I really want to um, perceive your statement to be uh, contentment. I think that ideology stands for contentment, contented with wherever, however, whatever you find yourself doing or wherever. I think, I don't know if that is what it means. I'm a, well, I I'm a crazy correct, dreamer, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a crazy dreamer. Okay, crazy, crazy a speaker. crazy dreamer with so much contentment. I, I, I believe, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess so. So I just, I'm a crazy, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very crazy dreamer and crazy risk taker. It's all right. So, um, so who are those mentors and role models that oh, you have okay. that, um, you know, has, has played significant role? Uh, I think the first person is my dad. My dad is, honestly, That's looking the, the, back. the first Yes, the first person is my dad, actually. I, I, I wouldn't, people would say my mom, but it's my dad for me, the number one. Because now, when I sit back at the office and I get frustrated with so many things, the first question that comes to my mind is, how does he do it? Or how did he do it? Because, you know, my dad had about 12 stations mm -hmm. running them along with my brothers and my sisters, of course, and he had other uh, businesses in real estate and all that. We used to even make mattresses. Yes, oh, we had wow. champion phone back then. Then we had Aphelox phone. Champion phone went down. Then we had Aphelox phone at some point in time, and then we we're into uh, shoes, you know, leather stuff and all that at some point in time, before the oil boom, 1970s, yeah. oil and gas and all that. So my dad, and even with all that, if any of my dad's children talk about him, 
you would assume that we, they, we are a nuclear family. Absolutely. Each person yeah. tends to be able to talk about him from the angle of this affinity and closeness that is so weird, considering his uh, business uh, engagement and how busy he ought to be. Yeah. And then another thing is, my dad, very funny, just last week someone sent me a YouTube link of a particular prominent Islamic scholar yeah. you know, talking about my dad. He said, my dad came to meet him. I know, okay, so I did, my dad posted them. They were leaving the house. And then people said to them that he doesn't wake up early, so you won't be able to see him. You have to wait. But he went to meet them. When he, went, when he got there, he told them, please, shake, pray for me. People think I have money, but I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I got, the shake was laughing at it. You that you just, you that you just handed a, a check of one million naira to us, you are saying that we should pray for you that you don't have anything. I mean, think about this one million naira at that time. Yeah. So first to know, he died in 2011. So we're talking about a 1999 incident, one Absolutely. million naira check. Humility. Yeah. And then the fact that even though it was, you know, that he was so, so interested in my community, Ibola. Yeah. And so today, when, you know, when we talk about my community, uh, we, are, we, we, are, we are settled quite in, in, in high population, in Ketu, in Lagos, in Mowe, Bafo, and what have you. And about 70% of these people will say, Alaji Lo Bamirale, you know. Yeah. So I am greatly inspired by how much he gave to the people, how yeah. much he was able to balance his life, you know, as a business person, as Family. someone who is a Muslim, as you know, and how he was able to balance that. It's crazy to have six women, you know. It's it's. I know what that means. It's crazy to have six women. Yeah, so, yeah my dad, and then uh, secondly, my mom. My mom is a police officer, still a police officer, still a serving officer. And uh -huh. funny thing is, when people curse police officers, well, sometimes I don't get to say this thing publicly, but I can beat my chest to say that my mom and my elder sister are. Officers of integrity. I can beat my chest anywhere. There are quite a that. number of them. Because well. yeah. my, my mom, the spoil case, like our colleagues say all the time, my mom is in charge of pensions and uh, salaries and all that. She's an admin officer. And every time people see her, every time people talk about her, it's just prayers upon prayers upon prayers. And so, you know, I don't see any reason why I should not fuck up. If in Quara today, when the people are talking, I'd always say, you know, so I can say uh, God should, you know, think about the goodness of my parents to be able. And then the third person is Senator Bremen uh, Salasaraki. That's like the person who opened my eyes to politics. Yeah. I did, you know, did I call it political apprenticeship? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I call it because, you know, she took me through so many political instances and strategies that I would never learn on TV or even learn in the four walls of classroom. Uh, so Bemi Sola Sayaki is a big, 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 big role model for me. Uh, those are like the, 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 the three people who has greatly inspired me. I love Aisha Yusufu so much, but as I grow older, I think I can't be an activist like her. <laughs> I think I just like to be a titular of Bayani Fawashi, who is a shrewd political person. I don't mm. think I want to be an activist with bass rules and all that. At some point, it, I actually thought I could be like her, but I don't think I have that kind of energy <laughs> you know, to be like her. But she's someone I respect so much. I respect uh, Omo Yele Shogore too. I do respect him. I respect the fact that for so many years, he's been able to stay on that on lane of consistency. Absolutely. Crazy. Yes. Nobody, nobody can dispute, Absolutely. dispute that. So I respect him. I respect um, um, Urisola Abiola because she's a young politician. She's been there for, like, I've known her for 10 years, and she has consistently maintained that this. I have quite a number of people that I look up to, even in Kwara State as well. There is Shobo Yakov, who recently got imprisoned mm -hmm. by the Kwara State government because of an article he wrote. And even when he got out of uh, the old, is it incarceration, we call it, he started working with the same government. And now, logically, you would say, why? Why? But at the end of the day, when you listen to him and you listen to the strategy, you would see that it is not about the noise, but about the strategy. So I have so much respect for him, for his heart of forgiveness, and for his foresight of the future. I, I have so much respect for Sharif 
uh, we call him Sheriff Gold. I've known him for so many years in Quara as well. Always anti anti Saraki, still anti Saraki till now. Oh, Hopefully, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a lot of respect for these people, and I'm open to uh, to to be able to maintain the sort of purity yeah. that I'm looking forward to to maintain mm -hmm. in politics, in business, and in life generally. Wow. Oh. So much room what else. <laughs> <laughs> so much. So but however, I think um you've actually mentioned quite a number of persons. You know, persons, yeah. you know, personality that actually shapes the way you approach both politics, business, ranging from that to other good people who whom we have actually we know of their you know, their pedigree. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that um, I really would ask you, you know. There's something about what you mentioned about your dad, especially how being able to create a balance as both a businessman and also family and all of that. So now let's talk about you in that field. Okay. So how have you been able to juggle law with business, working in the oil sector, and some other things? So how have you been able to you know, manage and create a balance? Uh, okay, so I have a passion. Me, my own passion is to raise the flag, the Anifuroshi flag. That's my own passion. I feel like the fact that I'm the penultimate child does not mean that I can't be the flag bearer. And I so strongly believe in that. Let me take you back a little. Yeah. Now, my legitimacy as an Anifuroshi, I knew that I needed to prove a point right from when I was young. Mm -hmm. I, okay, so my step-siblings could recite the Quran very, very frequently, and we could do it, myself or my younger brother. I pressed my father's neck to make me to, to help me get admission into the school my other ones attended so I could so learn could how recite. to recite the Quran, you know, and then so that I could have an award in my mother's flat, because every other person had an award in their mother's flat. <laughs> yeah, so I've always had that. So when my dad died, it was a big shoe, a very, very big life shoe. I mean, I was just 16 years old then. Uh, to take over managing filling stations and all that. Very hard, yeah? Yeah. Uh, my mom was kind enough to be able to hold forth for us. So now, beyond that, my, my younger brother was just in, I think he was in GSS too when my dad died. Wow. And so, uh, navigating that complexity was not was a huge. very funny thing. Yeah. So my second responsibility is for my younger brother to typify my dad's personality as well. And so that's why I am managing my brother's business as well. So it's not like managing his business, but I manage his affairs as a drift as a this and that. Yeah. Help him create content, tell him whatever deals anybody wants to have with my brother, it's you have to come through me, you know, yeah. and all that. Yeah. And then now I've also when I got into university of Bula, I knew that I had a team for politics. So now off the this thing now, I currently work as head of programs in the Office of Senior Special Assistant to the President on Citizenship and Leadership. I know that I need to do that to be able to stay afloat politically. Absolutely. Because it's not just about you know writing and tweeting and saying things about the government. You have to be in A government. Actively. You have to be actively involved in politics, and that's why, you know, I have to you know shuttle between Abuja, Lagos, and Kwara. Yeah. And then for the business, it just has to go on because imagine someone died about 13 years ago, yet we're still feeding off his effort. Yeah. So I must maintain. That this to and keep up the legacy. My husband is, is like funny thing. My husband is from my town. <laughs> we're from the same town before, so we're literally like no, not siblings, yeah, <laughs> but we share similar history. We share, you know, we know so much about one another. So absolutely, it's really not difficult to be able to do business together. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then now we've also been able to realize that for you to build a legacy, ah. Uh, you have to be active. You have to have political prominence and also be able to, you know, have a wealth. Yes. So for me, we also know that Alaji, for example, I mean, my father, was spending his money to do these things because he did not tighten his political network. Mm. Because if he did that, if he did that, some of these things, he wouldn't, he, he would just need 10 era phone call to be able to contact the right Ooh, person. The right person, yes. So, I know a lot is at stake, which is why I have to ensure to keep to keep up. It's not easy. It's not easy, honestly. It's not easy. But I'm grateful to God for my mom 
my understanding more. I think we're also lucky because, I, okay, for example, my manager is someone who, when I was in school, I used to call him to send me a church card. <laughs> 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 yeah, so he's been around for over 20 years. Yeah, wow. he's been around for over 20 years. So he understands me so well. So even when I used to be a foil attendant, so I didn't just come up to be a managing you director. You were also serving as a yes. foil attendant. So during the holidays, right from when I was in Unilag, would go and sell fuel at filling stations. So I was a fuel attendant, I was a supervisor, I was a manager at some point, yeah. So <laughs> I'm MD now. So I've worked with some of those people. So even across, of course, we have two aspects of our business. We have the filling stations and then we have the supplies. We sell mm. bulk products to retailers and then we also have stations where we sell to consumers. So even the persons who manage the supplies at the depot are persons who we work together. And another thing is the fact that, so about, I think 10 or 12 of my big brothers are in the same sector as well. Mm. Yeah, so whenever, for example, if I have difficulties, one of the first set of people I contact is Bramuri. <laughs> I disturb him a lot. <laughs> you know, so Bramuri, please do you have a cheaper product? Bramuri, somebody wants to buy this. Bramuri, they have more money than, Hello, Bramuri, please, can we do this? So sometimes we'll buy products together and then share. Because every of my father's six wives also are in the business. Oh. So it's quite easy to be able to do the something together. When anybody is trying to get into trouble, there's somebody you can call, you know. Yeah. You know, so that's like, I remember I was in debt uh, late last year. Huh. Yes, late last year. I was in a 27 millionaire debt. And the guy, <laughs> he was troubling my life. <laughs> and he did me a letter, you know, wanting to sue me. And I, I, I knew it was, it was a fraudulent transaction. You yeah. know, so I was supposed to supply him, but he lied to me about the whole thing. The thing is, escalated and everything. Now, the only reason why we're able to settle is because he spoke to my elder brother. If he had not spoken to my elder brother, I, was, I told him, let's go to court. Mm -hmm. You know, but because my elder brother came in and said, okay, you know, how much can you pay him and everything. So I think it's easier to be able to navigate and also having the knowledge and wisdom and experience of my elder ones and my mom helps me to... It reduces the risk and the stress and the stress. So, so that's mm. like it. I've had my fair, fair share, though. But <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, now let's talk about your um, your experiences in the political space. <laughs> I know that was going, but that's going to be more interesting for you. So, we are going to be talking about you um, uh, serving as one of the assistants to the Minister of Transportation, okay, okay. State Transportation, okay. right? So. Uh, so, which was most of the challenging, um, you know, moments? Right there. Yeah, working, yes. Uh, and what were really your, the various work that you actually, you okay. know, during your time and okay. tenure in okay. that okay. office so, space? Before I was a legal research and policy assistant, I was a PA. So, yeah, I was a PA for about close to two years or thereabout. The most interesting one for me was, do you know this kind of tease that you get when you watch the news and they announce that the federal government will be executing the project that you are the brain behind it? Okay. Yeah. You know, then, so before fair meeting, the ministers get a, something like an agenda of the things that will be discussed at the meeting. Yeah. So we would now look at it and pick up areas of interest. Yeah. And so as legal research and policy assistant, I do the research and give my advice in a memo to the minister to say, I think we should do it this way. I think when you get to the FEC meeting, you should you know, bring your talking points from this area, that area, that area. And for most of the time, it was really, you know, really cool to see that uh, the president, President Buhari, approved some of the things. Uh, another thing I used to do for her, I was the one who, I, was, I like social media. I like the media a lot, because I understand the power of the media. So. I, she, my boss back then, wasn't really a media person. I remember I, I made her to open a Twitter page. <laughs> you know, so most of the times, I know you should talk about this, you should talk about that. So I tend to be the one to draft a media post when she's going for speeches, uh, to deliver speeches, especially ones relating to youth and women. 
uh, mostly, you know, write the speeches and then we just sit together, remove some ads up. Now, the challenges, I think the number one thing is my perspective that back then was quite a reckless one because I thought that being a minister was like the gateway to solving all the problems of people. <laughs> oh. I thought that the ministerial position would potentially help us to be able to Number one, solve problems. Number two, position us as the most prominent politician in Quara. So I was quite aggressive with some of the initiatives that I thought she should, you know, propose. And I was the youngest in the office and always the youngest at the table when we strategizing. So I was always usually the devil's advocate. Yeah, well, wasn't that the kind of challenging? Yeah. The challenge is, yeah, so it wasn't really, really pleasant in the face of every other person. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, I used to get offended when my proposition don't get accepted. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd end up getting really, really furious because in my own church mind, I thought that, you know, people, you know, so yeah, yeah, very challenging. So most of the time, it now made me to be at the offensive. Of the older people in the office. Yeah. I don't. I remember there was a time when the chief of our company had told me. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. so I didn't exactly have a pleasant time serving with the minister. But I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And the lessons there have been very instrumental to me, my perspective, and my trajectory mm. today. Wow. Hmm. Well, I think you've actually said a lot of things. And this will actually lead me to, you know, asking. Okay. Um, of course, do you have any special plan or, um, um, you know, your goals, personal goals and all of that that you feel, you know, how do you perceive the future? Okay, so, uh, okay, the future, inshallah, is going to be beautiful. Absolutely. I, okay, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted because I have learned that somehow you can't have your legs into all the waters at the same time. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. just two. Yes, you have just two, exactly. <laughs> so, business wise, the goal is to have own a depot. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, vessels bringing the product directly, not a refinery, depot. Yeah. yeah. So, I think if we own that, we'll be able to slash the price because mm. I'm, I, I know as a fact that think about it when Dangote came before Dangote came in they were selling this one at 1005 1006 yeah. at the depot when Dangote came it slashed it to 1000 naira yeah what happened so the goal for me with regards to my business is to be able to own a depot in 15 years mm. and I do hope that God will strengthen us to be able to do that I've started already my business my new business name is Ola Taram, Ola Taram. <laughs> I'm sorry, already. Okay. We'll get there. Then, politically, uh, I'm still toying around the possibility of contesting in 2027 for okay. state assembly in my local government. But the only issue I have is the fact that I don't want to be Titi Pepe. Mm. <laughs> so, when I'm Titi Pepe, I'm reckless. And I just want to do, I just want to be wicked. When I'm teaching up where well, I consider the fact that, okay, the current assembly member is from my ward, ward two I just share, a red for the local government. And I think he's not doing enough. But hey, he's supposed to be my brother. So do I look at that and just say, <laughs> or do I so I'm actually playing, I'm I'm really playing at the possibility of running change itself for state assembly, it may be possible. It may be very possible. Yeah. That's on that. And then my third goal is just to continue being young. I like to play table tennis a lot. So <laughs> I'm really hoping that someday I'm going to meet Aruna. <laughs> 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 but that's like it. I'm just joking around. But basically, the two years, yeah, I want to have amazing kids. I want to have amazing kids that I'll be able to infuse the Anifuichi legacy. I'm very proud of my younger brother very proud of what he's doing. I'm proud of all of my older ones. Honestly, I'm proud of them. And I'm sure my dad is proud of every single one of us. Yeah. So I really hope to be able to bet kids who will, be, who will raise the flag as well. You know, I watched the Formula and some Kuti movie. 
you know, I was greatly inspired. You know, it's a strong family of so many successful. Absolutely. You know, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to raise the Ani Furoshi flag as I as that or even higher than that. Mijahi <laughs> Rasulullah. Well, it's been an awesome time with you. Thank you very much. And of course, I, I, my greatest interest and prayer for you is you achieve all those goals. Amen. And we hope to also be of support in any way as time goes by. God helping and God you willing. Just tell her your daddy to take me along with him when he's making those travels. <laughs> all right. Travels. I'll send the message across to her, your daddy. <laughs> So nice to meet you, um, Mad Madam Titi Lokwe and Ifo Woshe, and we hope for much more times and moments to also share experiences this yeah, matter. When, I run, when I'm coming off class, it's all right. We'll be there. We'll be there by God's grace. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you. So, thank we you are too. grateful. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank you.